My second example is uh, computerized tomography, which is still the working horse of medical imaging in hospitals and also is the example for inverse problems and improperly posed problems that you will meet whenever uh, someone mentions that subject. Okay, to understand what it actually means, let's start with simple x-rays. So uh, let's assume that uh, this is the body over here, and um, let's assume that an x-ray is taken. How is that done? Well, you have uh, an x-ray source somewhere, and uh, you have probably something like a film plate, uh, which reacts on x-rays, and uh, what happens is that the x-rays go through the body and meet that film plate, and what happens is you get an x-ray image, uh, which might look like this, and uh, let us try to interpret uh, the black and white values which you have here. Why is this one over here white? Well, it turns out that uh, there, were, there is a lot of bones around here. So the X-ray uh, going from the source to the film plate has been attenuated very, very much. So only a very small quantity of X-rays lands over here. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the film plate does not get black. It stays white as it was. Why is this region over here black in the x-ray? Well, there's a lot, of, that's the lungs, which you see here, more or less. And uh, what happens is that uh, the x-rays cross the lungs for a long time. The lungs do not, are filled with air, and uh, that does not attenuate the x-rays at all. So uh, it, uh, a lot of x-ray intensity stays, is left, and uh, so uh, that's why the film plate is blackened. It gets black because there's a lot of X-ray intensity that gets to the, uh, to the film plate at this point. Okay, so what we're actually looking at here, just as a first idea, is, um, well, uh, uh, if be uh, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in the line between the X-ray source and a point on the x-ray, if on that line there was something that attenuated the, uh, the x-ray very, very much, then uh, what we will have, uh, then uh, that um, point will get white, and then will um, get white, will stay white, because uh, not much was actually left. If on that line there was nothing in between, let's say there was only air, then uh, the, uh, uh, the respective point on the film plate will uh, become black, because a lot of uh, x-rays actually landed there. Okay, so we kind of understood uh, what's happening here, um, but well, would a doctor really be interested in that? Um, why, um, I mean, he has the X-ray image, it looks very nice and he knows how to interpret it, so where's the problem? Um, if you look very, very closely up here in that region, uh, then you will see what exactly the problem is. You have, you have some kind of shadow over here and that looks unnormal. Um, probably there's something between on the um, on the line between the X-ray and uh, the uh, and the point on the film plate um, that has attenuated uh, the X-ray, and um, you would like to know what it is. You would like to know what it looks like, and you would like to know where it is. But just from this image, you cannot tell. I mean, you can see that there's something is roughly over here, but um, you cannot say where, where it actually is. It could be on, on the, in this bag. It could be outside of the patient. It could be somewhere inside, but definitely to assess what it actually is, you need to know the exact location and you need to know what it looks like. Okay, so in this case, the x-ray is not really helpful. I mean, you know that there's something, but you can't tell what it is. Um, a possible solution has been created, uh, I think, just a couple of years after x-rays have 
been uh, invented or have been discovered by Röntgen. And uh, let us look at some machine that's extremely old, in fact. I hope you somehow understood what, what's, what was going on here. I think the movie quality is not very good, but uh, what happens is um, you do not take one image, not one x-ray of the patient, but uh, you take a lot of them and you change the position of the patient. So you get some somewhat like a, a 3D view and um, in your head you get the idea where actually that point, that, um, that uh, shadow that you saw on the image might actually be. Okay, so the idea could be if we have a lot of x-rays, we might be able to generate 3D images of the patient and of, uh, of the human body. Okay, and that's exactly the idea of computerized tomography. And uh, well, let me continue with that. Again, I mean, let's start with the same image. That was x-rays. We have one position over here, one position of the, uh, of, the x of the film plate, which is actually not a film plate anymore, but it's an electrical detector. Um, and we have an x-ray source over there, also one position, so we take one x-ray image. Now, what a computer tomograph does is it rotates this facility around the body. So it takes, ah, that was the conventional one, now, what it does, it rotates the whole thing around. So it takes a second X-ray from over here, a third X-ray from that position and so on. And what it generates is a 3D view of the, uh, of the patient, a 3D view of the human body. Now, let's again try to interpret what we see here. First of all, this is not three-dimensional, but uh, we restrict ourselves to reconstructing images of small disks through the patient, uh, like I already uh, started with uh, in the first lecture. So assume that this is somehow a disk uh, uh, of the um, um, a cross section of uh, uh, of the human body. It somehow looks like. Well, um, my body has been my, my body has been cut open over here. You take it up, you look down, and this is exactly what you would see. Now, um, again, I would like to interpret uh, the gray values that I'm seeing here. And uh, so, why is this uh, this region over here? Why is that black? Well, it was it's outside of uh, the uh, uh, it's outside of the um, of the body, um, which means that uh, the body is not uh, not the uh, body is not attenuating. Nothing is attenuating the X rays over there. So that's why this over here is black. And this already gives us an idea what this actually is. It is a map that we're seeing here. To every point in photo space, to every point in, in image space over here, it gives us the strength of the attenuation value in that, uh, in, in that point, right? So I don't know if I saw it, said it right, but we, we'll see. So why is this over here black? Well, it doesn't attenuate the X-ray at all. So the value over here is zero. Why is this region over here? Why is that black? Well, that's the lungs. There's, uh, again, there's air in there. So it also doesn't attenuate the X-ray at all. So that means it's black. Why is this one over here? Why is that white? Well, it's the backbone. That's bone and bone attenuates the uh, X-ray um, quite a lot. So the attenuation coefficient, the strength of the attenuation in this point is quite large. So that's why it's white. And uh, well, you can interpret everything in that way. For example, uh, you might ask yourself, what is this over here? So why are these uh, white shadows over here? Well, that's actually the bench that uh, the patient is lying on. So of course, you can see that as well. 
And uh, another thing you can see over here, this exactly is uh, the shadow that you saw on the first X-ray. So uh, we now have the location, at least in one um, in, um, uh, in, in one disk of uh, my body, and uh, you also have the shape over here. Okay, so let's recapitulate that. What computerized tomography does is uh, it computes an image of the attenuation function of a body. Not of the whole body, but only of a part of the body, but anyway. So what we're trying to find in computerized tomography is the attenuation function, which gives us for every point in the body the strength of the attenuation in that point. In that point, excuse me. Okay. So um, I hope that's understood. So here's a small movie of uh, such a computerized tomograph. I'm not sure if you can see it, but what, what it actually does is uh, it rotates, maybe I should pause it for a second. Uh, it, um, it rotates the facility that we had as a scheme in the, in the, uh, uh, in the second slide uh, around the patient uh, at a very, very high rotation speed. And by that uh, records a lot of x-rays, which can then be used for reconstruction and can be used for mathematical processing. Okay, uh, that's one thing. Uh, is there any? Yeah, and uh, a good question is, uh, what happens if we do not uh, take any, do any mathematical processing at all? Then we have this couple of X-ray images. Well, um, it turns out that uh, these X-ray machines, these computerized tomography machines, they um, take only data, only x-rays of a very, very small portion of the image of this body, exactly the portion that we want to depict. Uh, otherwise, the radioactive load would be far too high. So, uh, well, they do that. And um, yeah, uh, that's what comes out of the tomograph. So that's the data we're actually dealing with. When I get the data of a computerized tomograph, then it usually looks exactly like this. And uh, that doesn't give you any idea what's uh, in fact, uh, um, what is in fact inside uh, the patient. It doesn't give you an image. It doesn't give you, it doesn't immediately give you an image. And um, well, definitely some mathematical processing is needed to uh, compute the image that you just saw from this data. And in fact, this is the data that uh, was used to produce the image that you saw. Okay, um, of course you can do a lot of things with the computerized tomograph and um, the modern ones, they do no longer just produce two-dimensional images like uh, I just showed you, but uh, in fact, they produce three-dimensional images. So uh, you can, uh, whenever you have a patient, you can take viewpoints and take cross sections in the body as you like. And uh, we did that for, uh, what's, what's the English name? Surprise egg, Überraschungsei. So we took uh, a surprise egg and uh, put it into a computerized tomograph, a small one for small animals, and uh, looked at the images that came out. And uh, well, this has, by the way, this has been processed by us ourselves. So we took the data, we generated the images and what came out was actually something like this. And uh, if you stack all these images up, you get a three-dimensional image. And uh, well, this is the kind of images that you then can produce. And I let it to you to guess what, it, what this actually is. Uh, in the meantime, um, when you uh, see, um, I mean, how can we interpret the cross section in this case of, uh, this is obviously the outside, right? There's nothing out there. Then here's some, well, some structure around the egg. Well, that's obviously just the chocolate. Then um, 
there's something over here which is completely round. Well, that's the yellow box that's always inside. Obviously, this is some kind of figure, and you, from this image you can quite easily find what it actually is. But uh, I would like to point yourself to something like this over here. Can you see this? I hope you can You can see it. There's a fine structure over there. And um, the question is, what, what is that? Well, well, it's the manual, right? So these uh, CT machines are um, detailed enough to pick up this very, very small paper and really give you uh, the attenuation coefficient in this paper. So uh, we can conclude that uh, these machines work very, very well. And um, going back to the idea of inverse problems, if we can prove that this is in fact an inverse problem, then it can't be very difficult, right? Because, uh, well, we obviously make, um, make uh, errors in these x-rays and um, these x-rays, these errors seem not to get too large when processing the data and getting to the uh, getting to the images when solving the inverse problems. So we somehow assume that this problem is not so hard and uh, that's exactly something that we are going to show. <laughs>